Hey everyone, Shaber 1000 here. Today we got another episode of camping, nature, and outdoors. Today we're going river camping on North Hootie Point. So cue the kick ass intro music. Here we go. Okay everyone, we're at the campsite. We've been at these camp <coughs> excuse me, these campgrounds before. Uh we camped right over right over there. And uh and uh sorry about the wind. I'm trying to get out of the wind here. Always something. So brought the brought the boat down boats over there tied up and we're gonna get the tent set up and we'll talk some more hopefully the wind will calm down I'll film it for you but I'll speed it up Let's go over here and see what else we're gonna do. Okay guys, let's cut off a little bit of this wood. This was already here, so that's cool. Someone had chopped it there and there, but they didn't get all the way through. You get the idea. Okay guys, I've had this problem before. I don't know if I ever filmed it, but I'm gonna show you again how to fix this. It's not, uh, it's not pumping up pressure. Uh, so, in case I didn't film it or in case you missed it, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. I'm gonna get my multi tool out of here. And there's like this little veil. It's not like it is a veil right here just goes in on each side all right right here then you want to just pop this out just one side and the other side will follow and you pull that out see this one's old this one's got the old leather in it what that does is it dries out as you can see and it doesn't hold anymore so what I do is I take them out 
I bend it over like that for a couple minutes. Let it sit like that for a couple minutes. And then I'm going to get a little bit of oil I've got here. Just from my chainsaw. I'm going to just give it a little bit of oil. Let that soak in for a couple minutes. And then we'll put it back in. All right, so I'm gonna give this about five minutes and then we'll put it back in. What that do, what that does, what that does, <laughs> what that does is it um, gets this all limbered up again so it's not as, you know, stiff or whatever. See, it's already starting to limber up. So let me leave that set for a minute and I'll be back with you. Okay guys, so now we're gonna put this back in. Okay, and see how, how it's shaped now. More like a mushroom. And then, <clears throat> just gonna put this in here. This is where it can get tricky. And also that oil will help swell it up. When it swells up, it'll hold a tighter seal. Is. And I'm going to put a little bit more oil around there. You can buy them little seals, but as long as I can keep doing this, I'm going to keep doing this. The, this. This whole piece here is like 30 bucks. So I can already feel the difference. So now we want to get the other side in that. There's a hole on both sides. Get the other side, I, feel, I felt a pop in there. And then just pull this out a little bit. There it goes, it's in there. And it won't come out. Now let's see if we can, yes, there's pressure. Before it was just like this. Now there's pressure building up. Whoa, I see it squirting out over there. So, that's how you fix that, temporarily. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry out a little bit. I'm gonna pump this up. I was gonna cook on here because of the wind, but monkey thinks we'll be all right starting a fire. But next cut, you'll see fire trucks. <laughs> Okay guys, time to start the fire. The people that was right next door to us left and they didn't extinguish their fire all the way. So I brought this over. It's a beautiful campsite down there. If I knew they was gonna leave, I would have waited to set up. Just done some fishing. So I'm going to try to utilize what they left, which is stupid because they left a water container in there half burnt. So they, you know, right beside a river, there's no excuse for them not extinguishing that fire. I mean, it, you know, it's not like, not flames, but, you know, embers like that. And you leave on a windy day like this, you know. Monkey sitting over here beside me. She's got the big old fishing net there like she's gonna need it or something. Just like that. That's no joke, that's what they left there, so. Huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was getting bit by something a little while ago. 
couldn't tell what it was. And I said, must be them no sims The monkey said, yeah, because I seen one. <laughs> Woom went right past me, she said. <laughs> oh, somebody had a paintbrush in here. Well, probably for, you know, barbecue meat or something. Uh oh. Know what I mean? Yeah. Or base or whatever. This is what we cut up a little bit ago, but uh, it's not seasoned. It's not, I mean, I think it must have been alive when they cut it down. So we'll put that on later. Fish are biting though. Yeah. Just not the big ones yet. No. I keep getting nibbles, but nothing great. They're just not big enough to get the hook in their mouth. Yeah. That'll change long about dusk. All right, I'm gonna get this fire going. Well, it's going. I'm just going to get some more stuff to put on it, and I'll be back with you guys. And my camera was crooked again. Son of a... Okay, guys, as you can see, it's getting dark. But I wanted to show you this. A little bit ago, a monkey came out of the tent with something behind her back. I thought she had chips or something. She filmed it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't rolling, so but she got me this. For Valentine's Day. And I get I got these sour punch twists. Every Valentine's Day she gets me different candies. And I got these hot tamales. And this is cool. Warheads, cubes. So be cool i'm gonna be snacking tonight and tomorrow now i hope sam squanch don't see this but i think that's a different kind of beef jerky but she got me all these beef sticks my favorites so i got four beef sticks these i'm saving until tomorrow night because i'm gonna be by myself tomorrow night and I'll share some of this stuff with her if she wants some. So, thank you, Monkey. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day, Monkey. She ran up to the truck for me to get jumpers because I brought my an extra battery. It's in the boat. And I brought two inverters, but um, something's swimming around right here. But, um, The one that's in the truck, I think she's bringing it too, it's got to plug in to a cigarette lighter. <laughs> and the other one I brought, I don't know where it is, but it's got, uh, I had it out a few minutes ago, but it's got, it's supposed to have cables on it, so I'm going to have to use the jumper cables on it. <clears throat> because, um, you know, to keep our batteries charged and stuff and light, whatnot, so... Uh, we did bring the laptop. My, we got a couple movies we bought like two years ago. It's been on our camp and stuff, but we didn't have a... Her, her laptop will not play movies, and her dad's wouldn't, but um, I had to re-download VLC player or whatever it is, and, uh, and I got it working so we can watch a movie later, so, and keep these batteries charged. So... Yeah, so that's what's going on. It's, as you can see, it's getting dark. We're still fishing. Haven't caught anything. Getting bites, small bites. And we haven't caught anything yet. So, kick you guys back on here in a minute.
wake up at some hungry next morning and we <laughs> That one no damn coyote. Okay guys, story time. Story time. Now, once again, this is a tr What the hell? The strings on the rip of my jeans. Oh my God. It felt like something running across my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, it's a true story. It's going back about, about 1993. 94 ish right in there me and a buddy of mine was deer hunting on my grandmother's farm you know it's 63 acres i've mm -hmm. told him you know about that i grew up around there and uh so first day of deer season we got up in our stands you know bright and early you know, right, right before dawn, and he's up on this knoll. I'm down in the lower 40 acres, so I'm down like way down in a gully, like, and he's up on this ridge, right? And he's looking out over. There's a, a he's about 100 yards from the line fence, which on the other side of that line fence. It was a big old open field and just on this side of the line fence was a, a thicket of, of a couple acres of pine trees and then as he was looking out the pine trees would be on his left and if he looked this way there was a small open field about an acre and a half and then off to his right there was another where the well was there was about another acre of wide open land of course you didn't shoot in that direction we didn't have to we knew where the deer were running so i was down below so he was hoping you know that the hunters from over in that area would drive them to him and if he missed or whatever you know other hunters down because where i was i was about 200 yards from a line fence which was another open field it was never mowed or anything like the other one but hunters would drive them down down over because i was like down in a valley like this in my stand so I could see him coming this way this way all four directions and he could see him coming all four directions so that morning you know he uh, he saw a couple we let him go by because it was first day you know they were does and just you know your non-typical rack box smaller box so um, he let like three go and I let like three go so we we converged about noontime and I went down to the camper, had a camper down in there, and uh, we had lunch and everything. And so, all right, we're gonna head back up. We replenished our pockets with our snacks and our beef jerkies and, you know, cold snacks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, so, you know, so we head up because we walked up the same little logging road, and then he would go to the to the left. And he would be up in there about three fourths of a mile, and I would go to the right and then a, a slight left down and then around down into the bottom where I was at. So it was about a mile and a half from each other, right? And we're getting up in there, and it's we saw some more deer, but again, you know, it was the first day they they were running. I mean, we saw a bunch, and there was all kinds of shooting around us. People were getting deers, so but we knew there was there was a couple 12 pointers and there was a 16 pointer out there that that i had hunt hunted for i don't know like two years this was my third year on him a bunch of other people around the area there you know it was all hunting and they they had all seen him too because he would travel back and forth and he cut through our our land because we was kind of like surrounded like from route 40 then 265 
and then a few miles uh, off off of our property was the highway and so it was highway 77 so so we was kind of you know pretty good hunting so we knew you know i mean we we never we would hunt all week but we always had our deer within the first two days one or two, first day or second day and then we would go out and you know drive for other people and for those of you guys that don't know driving is like you know like you have walkers and then you have standers the standers would either be in a stand or you know sitting down on a log or whatever like up on a knoll or whatever or down in a valley vice versa and then we would start at the other end of the property like five or six of us and we would spread out and we would walk through just making all kinds of racket talking and joking and if there were any deer they'll jump up and they'll run up towards them so that's why we call driving them mm -hmm. kind of like an old cattle drive you know um but so anyway so this is the first day and it, it's getting along about dusk and i'm sure he was ready for a beer as much as i was and i was sitting there so i'm like all right so uh, you know i unloaded my shotgun and put my shells away and out of the corner of my left which that's about where dave called him dupe dupre oh dupe so dave he was you know would have been up on the knoll like i said about a mile and a half like to my left from where I was looking at my stand I could I could look almost 360 degrees you know the way I had it on the tree you know because I could go you know all the way around almost he was the same way but so I heard something and thinking anything of it I thought well Dave's probably on his way down to meet me which usually we met on top of the hill about the same time and so like I said it was about dusk you can still see good you know, I mean, we never stayed till dark because, well, you know, walking around the woods with shotgun, with slugs, you know, not a good idea after dark. So, you know, so it's about dusk time. Like I said, I'm getting ready. I'm just getting ready to get down out of my stand. I figure, well, I'm going to finish my cigarette. You know, I'll get down. I'll go meet Duke. And every time I tell a story, my fire goes out. Uh. So, like I said, I heard a noise again. I thought, reached in my pocket, and because you know our vests and stuff would have you know places for your shells, real easy to get to. So I pulled one out. And I'm sitting there. I'm just waiting, and I hear it again. So this time, you know, this is a Mossberg 500, and so I put I put that shell up in the bottom of the gun. <laughs> And I pulled it back as easy as I could, and I chambered it. Of course, I'm still on safety. I'm thinking a deer's coming, you know, because I've been that route before, and I'm thinking, I, even if it is probably just a doe, it'd be that 16-pointer. He always, he always eluded me. And uh, so I'm thinking, he, he's not going to get away from me this time. And I thought, well, if he's Dave, I'll, I'll see him because of the orange. Old dupe, he, he never showed up, and I heard something getting a little bit closer and closer. And then it was really weird because then all at once I felt like it's really cool breeze and it was a it was a pretty warm day for December. It was it was like 68 that day. The hottest I ever deer hunted was like 72. It was really really weird that that season. But this was like 68, and of course it was going to drop down into the 40s. But it was pretty warm. It might have been 66 ish. Anyway, you know it was just starting to cool down. And, but, I mean, I felt this ice cold breeze coming from that direction, from Dupe's direction, you know, just coming down, which is not unusual when you're down in the bottom like that to feel a breeze coming down. This was different. I mean, I actually got chills and back of my hair started standing up on my neck, you know. I just didn't feel comfortable, you know. So, I ejected that shell and I put it in my pocket. I was getting ready to get down and something caught my eye to my left. And it was long, I would say, you know, guess it's hard to gauge anything, you know, when it's a little ways away from you. I would guess about three feet long and maybe a foot and a half wide, you know, right? And I'm running out of memory card. I got four minutes. <laughs> Uh-oh. You went out. I went out. You can use this. All right. All right, so. He's upset. I know. He's, 
He's staring at something. And it's behind me. I don't see anything. Alright. Let, let me make room on my memory card and I'll be back with you. Okay, sorry about that. I just went ahead and made some room on this card. I brought some extra cards. I'm running 4K, so it doesn't last that long. And I had trouble starting out today with my intro. And, <laughs> but and mine went out the same time yours did. <laughs> well, I was still rolling, though. I still have four minutes left. Her battery just went dead. So I had to wait on her to change her battery, put Bruno to bed, because that really... Oof. When he's looking behind me like that, I don't like that. Yeah. So anyway, so as I was saying, you know, this, this is about three feet tall-ish, about a foot and a half wide, you know, kind of like, I wouldn't say cylindrical, but it wasn't square by any means. Uh, it was like a mist. And I'm not talking about fog rolling in, guys. I'm talking about this thing was like moving really slow, like hovering. But at the same time, I heard footprints. As soon as I seen it, I heard, like, footsteps. I heard footprints. I watched a YouTube show last <laughs> night, and a woman kept saying she heard footprints. Mm -hmm. And I guess that stuck in my head. So I heard these, kept hearing these footsteps. And, and you know, by this time, I'm starting, you know, well, you got a 12-gauge. What are you going to shoot? You know, it's a mist. It's like a fog. But like I said, it was like, and it was like, undulating you guys don't know how many years i've been waiting to use that word on youtube <laughs> but it was it was like undulating right and it was just slowly moving and as it went by me i could hear footsteps and just when it got to the right of me it just dissipated just you know like smoke from a cigarette it just kind of went and just disappeared and the foot the footstep stopped. So this time I, I'm I'm a little, you know, I, I'll be the first to admit. Well, I, I'm sure I'm not the first, but I will admit to you guys, you know, sometimes I get spooked in the woods. And that spooked me, and, and I was on the verge of being frightened, but I, I mean I can't say that I was scared, but I wasn't e at ease by any means. I was you know, I uh, yeah, I was really uneasy. So I got down out of there pretty quick, and I and I, I went up, and I just made the top of the hill. There was a big oak tree, huge, man, huge oak tree, top of this hill. And so as soon as I come out of there at that oak tree onto the logging road where Dave was at, and here come Dave just waddling pretty much as fast as he could without running. He was out of breath. He says, you ain't going to believe what I just saw. And I said, let me guess. You saw a weird mist and it was leaving footsteps, right? And his eyes got this big around. How do you know? I said, oh, I, I seen it too. You know, I'm trying to be cool, right? <laughs> yeah, I seen it too, you know. Like, like I see it all the time or something. He's like, how can you be so calm about it? I said, Dave, I'm not. I am pretty much almost on the verge of being frightened. He said, well, let's get the hell out of here. So we got the hell out of there. I went back to camper and we talked about it for a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean till like midnight, one o'clock. <laughs> and he saw it. So it came past him. He said it came out of that field of the neighbor's field. Mm -hmm. He said he just, he happened to hear he did the same thing. And he was still loaded yet at this time, you know, so it, which I would have been too. He was still loaded up, and he, but he was getting ready to come down and meet me at the oak tree. And uh, he said just out of the corner of his eye, he saw something, you know, when he was getting his stuff ready. And and uh, after he heard them footsteps, and so, you know, he's thinking deer, you know. But out of the corner of his eye, and when he saw it, and he, he said that's, he said he noticed as it got closer, so did the footsteps, and he... He said, he, he said a guy, and I believe the guy, I mean, we both can't make up the same damn story, right? Right. And, but he said it got, it got within about 10 yards of him. So that's about 30 feet, you know. Now, it didn't get that close to me. I would say it probably got about 35, maybe 40 feet, but it was pretty, you know, 
the 30 feet's not that far when you're out in the woods. It's not that far away. Right. Um, I never, I'd never seen it before then. I had some weird stuff. I got other stories about, about that property, but I'd never seen it before then. And I grew up out there my whole life, you know, and, and I never seen it after that. Um, he didn't either. Um, next day we both got our deer, but we was uneasy going up into the woods and neither one of us said anything to each other about it. It's just one of those things, you know, you know, he was uneasy and I was uneasy. Huh. Um, but we never, and, and we never talked about it after that. Um, we told a couple of our close friends, you know, that knew, you know, that we knew wouldn't make fun of us and, and would believe us. Um, and they said they had something similar happen on a guy's property about four miles from there the year before. Um, he said, when he said, when I say similar, I mean, it was pretty much the same, only his was more... His was more round and it wasn't quite as big and he did it didn't get as close but he did see something similar to that long about dusk and he heard the footsteps too. So that's my story for tonight. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that one because like I said, uh, that's true. Now, it, now, if I'm going to tell you a fabricated story, I'll tell you. Look, you know, I'm, I'm totally making this up. But these stories I tell you like this, um, I've got a lot of them. And um, these are all true. They're true stories. It's like when, you know, when I got in a fight with a deer. Uh, yeah, that was a true story. That really happened. I got my ass kicked by a deer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, um, but, <laughs> it gives me chills thinking about that, you know. But, yeah, that's what, I'm talking to her camera, too. <laughs> I'm not ignoring you guys. And I'm not ignoring you guys. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Yep. And I will have another one for you guys tomorrow night because I'm staying out here tomorrow night, too. You are. Yeah, I am. Monkey's going back. But I'm going to stay out here now. Now I'm going to psych myself out in the morning. I'm going to be out here by myself. Because uh. there's several acres back through there before it gets to the woods, and, and there's nobody back in there. Nope. <laughs> We're the first ones that something's going to get if it comes out of the woods at us. Yep. <laughs> Well, we did have people beside us, and they left. Yeah, yeah, they left. They packed up and left. But So, anyway, guys, I'll be back with you. I'll be back with you guys later. Bye, Shea Bear. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to my story. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, check this out. So, I thought since we're out in the open, I would try out the uh, Harbor Freight Light. Now, directly in front of you mid screen you can't see it yet there's a palm tree and it's approximately 60 feet away I paced it off so let me turn the light on shit let me plug the light in and I'll turn it on All right. here we go It would help if I plugged it all the way in. And there's the palm tree. About 60 feet away. Might be a little more or a little less. Now I'll show you. The light is amazing. It is on bright. There it is. I mean, we got that little light up there. <laughs> There's the palm tree. So. It's amazing, isn't it, Mama? Yep. So we'll go up here. And, Lots of light. And it's also pointing down, too. It's not pointing straight out. No. Is that the highest? Yeah. <clears throat> I just said that. Yeah. See, now if I pull it up, now oh, you can wow. really see it. It's like a football stadium here. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and shut it off. There's low, and you can still see the palm tree. It's about one o'clock, by the way. What time is it? 
it is one o'clock exactly yep so we'll turn it off and what you're seeing here is from that light and a little bit of firelight here we'll turn it on again so yeah I mean look at that it's like like daylight out here so that light is amazing pretty cool just wanted to share that with you uh, what I what I was telling monk earlier was what what they should have done which I can see why they didn't do it is because so they can make money on a charger but being how you can plug this in why not incorporate a charger into it to where when it's plugged in it can charge your battery at the same time because as it stands right now you have to take that battery out let me see here I'll show you see there's no battery in it you have to take it goes right up in there you have to take the battery out to um, to plug it in and there's the battery well you know you're out on a job site it's easy to forget that battery laying somewhere you know at least I made it you know the plug come out here or something you know so you don't have that issue but yeah so that's that's pretty cool want to share that with you okay guys so we're getting ready to call tonight um, See what time it is here in a second. It's 1.25 in the a.m. And I'm going to watch a movie because she's going to go to sleep. Bruno's going to go to sleep. This is what I'm going to watch. So, until morning, you guys have a good night. Good morning, guys. It's late morning. And uh, it's pretty windy. We was up early this morning, about seven o'clock, and then came back in and laid back down for a while. Um, but yeah, um, it got chilly last night. But we had uh, I brought that that little heater in here, that little buddy heater, and. It worked pretty well for this big tent, but I got a story about that for later. Uh, so let's go back out. I think Monkey's making coffee. I don't drink coffee, but I'll see if she needs some help. And then I'll be back with you. Okay, guys, so real quick while there's a, a break in the wind, it's really windy today. Uh, I'll show you the campsite. Well, we got set up here. There's our light set up. Got it on that big heavy duty tripod there. Ain't this thing focusing. Anyway, uh, so I made monkey's breakfast. And <laughs> I come out and she was making coffee. Well, she made it. And it was uh, over just what little bit of coals that was left in the fire. Because I had a fire this morning at about 7 o'clock, but I didn't put any big wood in, So, it, but it was still warm, and she was like, I said, how's your coffee? She said, it's warm. I said, oh. I said, why didn't you use this? She said, oh, it's fine. I said, you want me to put it on here and get it hot for you? She said, yes. <laughs> and then I made her sausage and eggs, so we're going to take a little boat tour, a little boat ride I'll bring you along. Let me change the battery in this thing. Just to make sure and yeah if we see anything i'll kick you back on okay guys so i, <laughs> I took the boat out because i lost like three hooks and three sinkers in that tree over there the wind i guess kept blowing it over there i was casting that way and it was just <whistles> so monkey filmed it i didn't but she used her camera so maybe i can use some footage for that but i took my little boat <laughs> trawled it over there with a trawling motor with only two of the things left on the prop because it's a three prop and one of them's broken off but i brought it over here and i did i was successful 
on getting one hook and one sinker back and I still got my bait on it and then I found this got a little hook and bobber then this thing like a cape it's a cable leader with some massive sinkers and I thought this had a hook on it yeah it does right there but I'll have to replace the hook but I'm gonna use this stuff before I use mine and then this one's pretty cool still got the bait on it of course no good but we got all these split shots there sinkers and then we got a leader here with the clips and then another leader down here with the clip that's not really that old because it's not that rusted a little bit of rust on that one but so there's my treasures so I'll throw a clip in a monkey's clip all right <laughs> throw some of that in there so you can see what I was doing to look funny but anyway <laughs> more fishing time huh monk yep all right guys so this is going to conclude day one of our fishing trip and our camping trip i did catch a fish earlier today just a little bluegill so i am going to end this video and uh i will start with my solo so thanks for watching guys appreciate it hope you enjoyed the video We'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned for solo night fishing. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Take care. Shea Bear, the Myth Man Legend. I'm gone for now. We'll see you.